The Bayern side, Müller, Dremler, Augenthaler, Gobe, Horstmann, Kraus, Breiter, Plugler, Del Haye, Hörnes and Rummenigge. So the match kicks off in the most magnificent atmosphere for a European night here at Petodre. The rain has been falling for some time before the match. The surface will be treacherous and greasy. And the stadium absolutely packed with tickets changing hands for very large sums of money today. So every seat is filled and Paul Breitner trying to calm things down for the Bayern side, the very experienced German captain. The header from Cooper. Royal on the right is Del Haya. He will play in that position. They played against Dugrugvi in that position in the first leg, and that's a very heavy tackle. The referee is Monsieur Michel Vautreau from France. So the free kick to Bayern. And they'll be very happy to settle in the first 15 minutes, I'm sure, as Aberdeen try to pick up the pace. Put them under pressure at the back. Argenthaler at the back. Breitner. Kraus is brought down, and again, the free kick is given to Bayern. The Aberdeen players suggesting that the Bayern man took a dive. The French referee waving the Aberdeen players back. Jim Layton, the keeper with the best record in this competition this season. This is Horsman. Looking for Hornis in the middle, it's won by McLeish. A header from Grobe, and this time the free kick goes to Aberdeen. Eric Black will be a very important player up front for Aberdeen, linking up with Mark McGee. Strachan involved straight away. Wide on the far side is Rugby. McGee trying to turn. Now McLeish. Strachan with his marking players very close to him. Grobe wins it. Pull backs in trouble and the clearance from Agenthaler. That was a little bit risky at the back for Boyan. Horseman in the way. Simpson challenging fiercely with Dremler. Cooper, this is Del High, tackled by Simpson. Well, the tackling is already very tough indeed in midfield. This is Plugler, the man who replaced Nachtwey from the first leg, now Rummenigge. Going away from Strachan. Simpson coming to meet him, this is Dremler. Played in first time by Del Haye. Rummenigge wins it, but he had to climb on the shoulders of Neil Cooper to do so. Stuart Kennedy for Aberdeen. Horseman going in heavily behind Eric Black. Very experienced player, Udo Horseman. And the clearance off the toes of Neil Simpson. And Aberdeen have started as though they mean business. Haugen Taller on that occasion. Making the clearance. And the corner kick expert is Peter Weir, who's already gone to the right flank. The packed six-yard box. A bit of pushing going on in the eyes of the referee, and it appeared as though Rugby was the man penalised. Peter Hannes was back helping out in defence. Hannes has taken a knock, some blood in the nose, I think. Rumenegger losing to Miller, but this is Hannes. Brighton misses it. Cooper now to Strachan. Running away from Flugler, and on the left, Peter Weir. Del High is number 10 going back to help his defenders, taking on Dremler. This great play from Weir. The cross is touched on by McGee. And Black was just a little bit too close to McGee as that flick came over. Now Kennedy. 
Going outside Fiogler. Eric Black. And he's won the corner kick. And Aberdeen have started in very impressive fashion indeed. Looking very sharp and business-like. So Black goes to the goal line. So does Mark McGee. McLeish and Rugby are also in the box as Weir takes the kick. McGee coming off his marker to the short corner. And Weir will have the chance once again. Bright the marshalling the Bayern defence. Weir's corner kick. Kennedy wants it back in the danger area as quickly as possible, but it was Alec McLeish, I think, who was caught coming out. Free kick's already taken for Bayern. Hernes has broken to the right. And Willie Miller calmly escorting it back to Jim Layton. Breitner. Boxed in by Strachan, Cooper and Kennedy. Kraus. Dremler, member of the West German national side. Horsman and Augenthaler retaining possession at the back. Rummenigge is offside. Well, Rummenigge is playing very close to Dieter Hoeneß in the early stages, right through the middle for Bayern. At least playing it forward, McGee holding off Augenthaler. Using it rather softly to Pluger. There's Grober breaking from the back. Del Haya on the right. Look at the pace of this man, can he catch it? Well, he was very keen to try to outpace Rugby before the big fullback could get too close to him. A rugby taking the short goal kick from Leighton. Careless ball easily picked up at the back. Rummenigge. He's got Flugler on his left. It's very tight though. And Brightman is the supporting player in midfield. Flugler again. Cowers and Horseman trying to work the one two. Simpson steps in. Weir is breaking on the left of Neil Simpson. Well timed tackle by Dremler. And the challenge coming in from Neil Simpson, quite decisive. Cooper and Simpson together in the midfield for Aberdeen. Formidable pair. And the crowd virtually getting that foul throw decision for Aberdeen. Referee Vautreau was rather slow. McGee running into trouble. Aberdeen's throw on the far side. Black is in the centre forward position, allowing McGee to wander to either flank. There's McGee. Back it comes to Simpson. Well, you can see how hard he worked to keep the shot down. But he didn't get the power all direction right. Rumenegger being hustled by Miller. The referee decides that was unfair. Aberdeen skipper Willie Miller goes back. Horseman picks up the shot. Free kick from Rummenigge and back to Algentala. And Dremler content to use Manfred Miller in the Bayern goal. Hernes jumping with McLeish. And Hernes appeared to foul McLeish, but now the referee gives the decision the other way. Well, I thought that Hernes was backing into McLeish all the time. Nevertheless, the referee's decision is what matters, and Bayern are the free kick. 
Inevitably, it's Brighton that over the ball. Logan Taller looking for a chance to shoot. And that's the moment that Aberdeen were dreading. Algen Teller with a marvellous goal, puts Bayern in front. Stunned silence all round the stadium. The Aberdeen supporters can't believe it, and it really couldn't have been any simpler. A harshly given free kick in my view, but Brighton made the most of it. Knocked the ball square, Algen Teller came forward, showed a lot of dexterity to create the space, and the shot left Leighton totally helpless. Well, that puts the pressure right on Aberdeen. After that great performance in Munich, they now face the prospect of having to score at least twice if they're going to stay in the European Cup Winners' Cup. So Miller playing it away. Touched on by McGee. So 11 minutes gone as Bayern now start to try to settle on the lead. Bayern, of course, manages 1-1 one, one draws away from home in the last two rounds against Moscow Torpedo and Tottenham Hotspur. And a 1-1 one, one draw, of course, would be good enough on the away goals rule to take Bayern through. Rugby was hoping for a decision there from the referee, but the goal kick is given. This is header. I haven't seen much of Strachan. That was his header to Cooper. Black looking for Strachan. Well, it runs for Kennedy. Now oh, Strachan. Aberdeen did a great deal from Little Man tonight. Robbed by Rumenegger. The free kick is given to Aberdeen. Rumenegger earlier a picture shaking his head in disbelief. There's McGee going through. And the German cover was good enough. The goal scorer, Augen Thaler, coming across. It'll be a throw to Aberdeen, the corner flag. Stuart Kennedy's there. Brightness header. Helped out by Hernes. Rubinick is the only man up now for Bayern. Del High breaking on the right. Good anticipation from Willie Miller. He saw that move coming and cut across very quickly on Del High. Haugen Teller will play that all the way back to Muller. Very experienced keeper, Manfred Muller, 35 years old, replacing Jan-Marie Pfaff, who is injured, the Belgian international goalkeeper, who broke Scotland's hearts in December at Brussels. Simpson, Strachan has found some space. It's immediately closed down by Breitner. Rugby's free in the far side. Now we are. Rugby's continued the run. He wasn't picked up by Del Haya. The ball driven against Grober, giving Aberdeen the throw. Now Simpson. Back to Cooper. Well, they scored against Patrick Thistle on Saturday, but didn't threaten Muller in the German goal tonight. Good header from McLeish, but we had come inside. Dremler playing it to the German left. This is Horstmann. Strachan challenging. Bit of touch on from Rummenigge. Miller is first to the ball. A little bit of the sting has gone out of Aberdeen with that shock goal in just 11 minutes from Haugen Teller. They really have a mammoth task ahead now. Good play from Strachan, now he's got the chance to attack Augenthaler. Grob is getting back to cover. Well-timed tackle by the Bayern defender. Flugler leaves it to Rummenigge. 
And already the Aberdeen supporters know the class of the opposition. Rummenigge retaining re re possession for Plugler. Just Kraus. Running into a tight corner. Plugler inside to Rummenigge. Rummenigge is the focal point of every Bayern attack. Halhen has run away from Rummenigge. And Neil Cooper apologising to his teammates for that hasty clearance into touch. A lot more time than he knew. Rudo Horseman is number three. He's already got a European Cup medal. He won it at Hamden Park against St. Etienne in 1976. The throw is given. Flugler goes down, looks for a free kick. The throw is already taken by Aberdeen. McLeish. Rugby looking for McGee. There's Weir, trying to thread that up the line for Simpson. And the Sabadine supporters have gone strangely silent, acknowledging now that the task ahead is formidable indeed. Bayern have already shown themselves to be a very, very high quality outfit, and they've got that precious lead. Now Kennedy can retrieve that, or oh, he'll let it go for the throw. Bayern are content to pull every man back whenever Aberdeen have possession, including Rummenigge and Hernes, their strikers, strike and forced to go deep to win possession. There's Cooper. Now Miller, just too high for Black. McGee arriving a fraction too late. Misunderstanding between Cooper and McLeish, Rummenigge on the break. This is dangerous for Aberdeen. Del Haye is free in the right. This could be a disaster for Aberdeen. And Del Haye doesn't quite get control quickly enough. So the danger of Rummenigge quite clear once again for Bayern. Now we're on the break. Now Black's control wasn't good enough, but Strachan has space in the centre of midfield. Rather ambitious pass intended for Weir. Now Rugby. Black helps it on. He hoped, I think, that McGee was standing a little further off him. Good control from Hernes. Now Del Haya. Looking for the opportunity all the time to exploit his tremendous pace. Bright now controlling midfield. Augen Teller has settled very well in the heart of the West German defence. Well, Rugby took his time about that. Good header from McGee. But once again, the Bayern cover is excellent. Grobe this time coming over. Well, you can hardly blame the Bayern defender. They're controlling things for the moment. Strach into Miller. McGee once again getting a touch as he goes up with Horseman. He was bumped from behind and Aberdeen get the free kick. Horseman going back to Mark McGee. Strachan is over the free kick. Chip towards McGee, looking for the turn. And once again, the tackling was positive enough on McGee, but Aberdeen have won the corner. Now, every Bayern player is inside the box except Rummenigge. Weir with a kick. Won by Augenthaler again, and this is Kennedy to Weir, who stayed on the right. Far post ball. Rugby was there, but he was covered all the way back. Dremler did well. 
And now Del Haya has a chance to make a run in the break. Misunderstanding there, allowing Weir to come in. Now he's a shooting chance for Peter Weir. Well, he could have gone further on, I think. Did well initially to create the space, but he really could have attacked the box before letting fly with the shot. Relaxed figure of again in the centre circle. Rugby's header is collected by Simpson. We are running into trouble. Bringing down Dremler. Wolfgang Dremler, a key man in the West German World Cup squad in Spain last summer. He played in the final against Italy. So Brighton are lining up the free kick. The referee insisting that Peter Weir goes back the full 10 yards. Well, no, pretense, no pretense at going on the offensive by the Germans. Rummenigge once again finding space, playing off Hernes. Right now, beaten by Strachan, and the referee gives the free kick. Breitner was in trouble. Michel Vautreau, the French referee, looks very calm and relaxed. So striking, moving forward as Rugby has possession on the left for Aberdeen. Here's Eric Black, that's a good turn. Finding Kennedy in space on the right. The early cross coming off Flugler for yet another Aberdeen corner kick. Once again, we are coming across and the tall Aberdeen defenders go forward. This time, a variation, the short one. Kennedy flighting it in. That's a great header off the crossbar by McLeish. And a let off indeed for Muller in the German goal. That was a great effort. And still, McGee coming forward, trying to find a way through. He's brought down, the referee waves aside these faint appeals for a penalty kick. We'll take a look at that header one moment as Aberdeen come forward again. Here's Strachan playing it across. The piece is still there. Down it comes for Simpson, and the shot goes over. Well, Aberdeen picking up the pace. It could so easily have been the equaliser. Very intelligent corner kick by Peter Weir, playing it short to Kennedy. Kennedy flighting it across. There was the header. Miller was beaten, but the crossbar rescues Bayern. McLeish playing it back. So the free kick to Aberdeen, rugby. He's certainly showing plenty of urgency. Here's McGee. And another corner kick to Aberdeen. Supporters coming to life again. They are picking things up, making a lot of noise in support of the favourites. They went quiet after Hogan Teller's goal. So we are this time from the left. Rugby's there, beaten by Hogan Teller. And Rummenigge setting up Del Haye on the break on the right. The great return pass. And Cooper did well, getting back to close down the space for Rummenigge. And regain possession for Aberdeen. Strachan, he's been forced to go very deep indeed to get possession. He really hasn't had much of the ball in the last third of the pitch. Now here he's got the opportunity from Cooper. Kennedy on the overlap. Looking for room to make the cross. That's easily mopped up by Bayern. Now Cooper. Missing strike in, the ball's out for the throw. So Cooper's having a tough battle in midfield.
And no urgency at all about the German throw. Strachan keeps it in and wins the throw. Playing the ball off Udo Horsman. McGee, very strong on the ball. Still retaining possession, Strachan staying available just behind him. Miller coming forward. That's well read again for the German defence. Augenthal in particular, he's had a tremendous match in the heart of the defence so far. Greer is brought down and the whistle goes. Wolfgang Kaus was the offender. We almost carried on. And Rugby is getting a little bit heated about the time-wasting tactics of the Bayern players. So the short free kick. McGee trying to make room for the shot. Well, high, finding Rummenigge. The secret for Rummenigge at this stage is to retain possession to allow the support to arrive from the back in midfield. He's done that superbly. Kraus couldn't control it. Now we are. Strachan wants it inside. Simpson. A little bit obvious with the inside pass towards Strachan, allowing Kraus to make the tackle. Now McLeish. Well, the Germans are quite content to allow Aberdeen to play the ball square across their back four. It's the penetrating passes which are much more difficult for the Aberdeen players. Kennedy trying to go beyond Flugler. And this is why Flugler is playing in place of Nachtwey, because of his defensive qualities. The clearance falling straight for Willie Miller. Well, that's a pass Miller will want to forget. It's cut up by Hernes. Flugler put under pressure by Strachan. Good ball inside. This is Hernes. Immediately looks for Rummenigge, who's waiting inside. So Hernes working hard up front to make room for Rummenigge. Rummenigge plays in that area just off the principal striker, Hernes. The pass cut off by Cooper. Now Miller. Strike and taking up good position on the right. Kennedy is coming on the outside. There's Black. We'll have to use Kennedy, I think, behind him. No, I'm doing him less than justice. Good play by Black. And the clearance inevitably from Augenthaler. And Black is on the ground. He took a knock as he played the ball across. Well, he's been showing some good flashes of form up front. Uh, but he wouldn't like to lose him at early stage of the match. Seems to be all right. Kennedy's header inside. Striking the chance for the cross. Beautifully flighted. Tremler did well beating Weir, and this is Del High trying to get it away from Neil Simpson. Try and get the throw. Pushing by Willie Miller, he clearly disagrees. The victim was Rummenigge. So Rummenigge going way into the deep position to take the free kick, now leaving it to his former international colleague right now. Well, I think if Aberdeen had any doubts at all before the match, they've been dispelled now. They are in for a very difficult night indeed. Mark McGee will be a vital player up front, but this undoubtedly is perhaps the biggest task that Aberdeen have had to face in their European career. The quality of this Bayern side becoming more and more apparent as the match goes on. Grober this time coming forward. Rugby intercepts for Weir. Simpson immediately put under pressure. Kraus 
Dale High trying to outpace Rugby unsuccessfully, the long stride of the fullback. Well, what's the decision? And in fact, it's Bayern who are getting the free kick, the referee are judging that Rugby fouled Del Hayo and he made that challenge. Once again, that did seem a trifle harsh. Breitner to Rummenigge. Miller attacks the ball, plays it wide. That's not a good clearance. McLeish at full stretch. Well, he had Flugler coming in behind him. McLeish very angry about the quality of the initial clearance. So Bayern have the corner kick, which they're in no hurry at all to take. Rummenigge strolling over. Whistles from the Aberdeen supporters. Leighton on the line, Simpson guarding the post. Good corner by Rummenigge, headed away by McLeish. Dremler playing it forward for Del Haye and much too firmly. That's Aberdeen's goal kick. So Del Haye has stretched the Aberdeen defence on their left flank with his pacey running. Rugby inside to Miller. Once again, the Germans funnel back into their own half. The only passes on are passes which are square across field. The German marking is very tight indeed. Cooper's header and the flag was up on the near side, the French linesman. Free kick quickly taken, playing the ball back to Manfred Müller in the Bayern goal. Hernes holding off McLeish to allow Rummenigge to win possession. The high is available on the flank. It's a good crossing position. Hernes and Rummenigge both attacking the ball, but no power in the header. Now it's tracking. Could throw out that from Leighton. Black coming off his mark and leaves it to Strachan. Neil Cooper. Rugby helps it out to Weir. Strange hush around Petaudry. Well, Simpson felt that he was being harshly dealt with from behind, but the ball is out and it's a goal kick to Bayern. And really now you can hear a pin drop inside Petaudry. The Aberdeen supporters realise just how tough it is. Well, the beach end remains pretty quiet. He's trying to build up some singing now. Miller robbing Rubenegga. Strachan. Hasn't been the influence in the match that all the Scottish supporters hoped. Uh, he's won the free kick this time, the attentions of Flugler are penalised. And the ball is played away by Breitner. Strachan upset about that time-wasting manoeuvre, and really the referee will have to take a grip on this. We're barely over the half-hour mark, but the Bayern players making it perfectly clear they'll use all their wiles as far as they can, as we had played it across, and that's great handling by Miller. McGee was waiting. Well, that was a fine attack by Aberdeen. We are finding space in the box, turning on it, playing it at an angle across Muller. McGee was waiting, but the handling of the goalkeeper was quite superb. Haugen Taller. Flugler. Rumenega retains the ball as if it's tied his boots by elastic. Kraus. Del Haya has enough pace to reach that. Very deep cross. Well, Plugler might have left that to Breitner. Horseman robbed by Strachan. A bit of space now for Aberdeen to work. If McGee can work up some pace on the right. Running at Grober. 
and playing the ball against the defender to win the corner kick. But to be fair to McGee, the support through the middle was a little slow in arriving. Well, the crowded goal mouth again as Weird plays it low this time. Strachan trying to find a way through. Back to Cooper. That was blocked by Hernes and behind the corner. And Dieter Hernes, the principal striker along with Rummenigge, right inside his own box to block that shot from Cooper. Eric Black is number 10, McLeish is number 5. Here post ball, McGee trying to help it on, there's Simpson. Cooper leaping for it. And touched back calmly by Kraus. Rugby, Weir came back very quickly to stay on side. But that prevented him reaching the ball. Here's Del Haya with Simpson snapping at his heels. The road to Miller and goal was cut up by McGee. Miller did not take his eye off the ball as Rumeniger came at him. Well, good spirit there between the two international players. Wiseman gives the throw to Aberdeen. And the foul throw at that. The linesman indicating that Kennedy offended in some manner, I think perhaps encroaching on the field as he took the throw. Miller to Strachan. Look at the crowd of players around Strachan. This time he's got a little bit more space. The far post ball is too high for Black. So no danger there for Muller. Rummenigge has taken a knock. Horseman thumps it high into the terracing. Strachan's throw played in by McGee. Now Miller. Replaces Kennedy on the touchline. Breaks for Cooper, now McGee. That's a great cross, Eric Black is there! It's off the line, now it's played in by Simpson, and Aberdeen at level. Petaudry comes alive. Neil Simpson, the scorer. So Simpson with his ninth goal of the season. Gives Aberdeen a lifeline that looked as though Boyan had control. Created on the right. Space found to make that cross. A great ball across from McGee. Black did very well beyond the far post and nodded back to the goal line. Was blocked on the line and Simpson in typical fashion coming through to follow up and score. So seven minutes from the interval. The scoreline Aberdeen 1, Bayern Munich 1. And let's see the extent to which that lifts Aberdeen. And Neil Simpson made tremendous ground to score that goal. He came from a very deep position when he saw the opportunity being created. The bright and flighting in the free kick. Miller's header is kept in play by Strachan. Kennedy and Miller being very careful. That's good play from Miller. Well, that's inspiring play from the Aberdeen captain. He's still sprinting through the middle to get involved in this attack. And Strachan's long flung ball towards Weir doesn't get there. Rugby coming in heavily behind Del Haya is penalised. Rugby suggesting that he wanted the ball and Del Haya simply made the back for him. But the French referee gives the free kick. McLeish and Hernes. Well, McLeish is penalised. Hernes appears to be making a great deal of that. And well, now he gets to his feet. 
The referee is giving an indirect free kick, indicating dangerous play by Alec McLeish. Well, I think the Scotland centre-half was harshly dealt with again, making his protest known to Hannes, indicating and he went for the ball and Hannes perhaps didn't. Brighton will take the free kick. Leighton's committed. Well, for one horrible moment, it appeared as though he may have come too quickly. Offside flag is up on the far side. Aberdeen's free kick. Now they'll want to press home their advantage before the half-time whistle goes. Del High. Simpson to Strachan. Now Willie Miller inviting McGee to come off his marker. Grobe, he did so. Still McGee. This great play from the Aberdeen striker, and Kraus is back, helping out in defence. We'll keep that in. Low one play towards Strachan. Well, the first time shot was absolutely right, he just didn't control it. Swept back from Peter Weir. Strachan had to take it first time, he had to try to keep it down, and he just couldn't quite make it. Getting off the head of McLeish. Horseman heads it on as far as Strachan. Handball, surely, but the referee lets advantage go to Neil Cooper. Here's Kennedy. Switching to his left foot. Inviting Weir to challenge. Now that was a penalty kick, surely. No, the referee's waving play on. There's Black! No bird, the ball's coming on the bar and behind for the corner. Well, now, that was very interesting indeed. Eric Black will no doubt feel he should have scored. But should that have been a penalty kick? The high ball coming in, Weir was barged off it. The referee wave play on. There's Cooper. Didn't get a hold of it. Well, for the first time in the match, it looks as though the Bayern defence may be creaking a little. They haven't looked quite the same since the equalising goal. So, can Aberdeen cash in in the final two minutes of the first half? There's Cooper. Now McGee. A good tackle from behind. Well judged. Del Haya on the break. Rummenigge hanging back again to take the pass inside. And striking back the challenge. Cooper keeps it in, but only for the benefit of Drimler. Del High to Drimler. Well, no qualms at all about taking it all the way back. Drimler has 20 West German caps. Cooper using the pace of Kennedy, a left flugler with that sprint up the right. Well, the cross wasn't up to the standard, but Kennedy had a second chance. Good play again from McGee. And look at the cover, Grobe coming across, very fast indeed. But McGee beginning to look as if he's very much in the mood. Short corner kick, and striking now, weaving for position in the box. Inviting a rash tackle, making the byline and winning the corner kick off Paul right now. Well, that's a strike and we all want to see. I mean, the confidence, the jink can run at the German defence. One rash tackle will be the penalty kick and the skill could take him into a goal-making situation. Weir's corner. Header from Rugby. Enough challenge on Duke Rugby to make it impossible for him to direct the header properly. So now into stoppage time, there hasn't been a lot of that in the first half. 
tackle by Cooper and Breitner. That has resulted in a bit of pain for Paul Breitner, unless he's doing a bit of dramatic acting. And the look of his easy run forward, that might well have been the case, but here's Dremler in a forward position for about the first time in the match. Aberdeen will have to beware these breaks on the back. A lot of quality in the play of Dremler. And what has the referee given? The appears to have given a free kick to Aberdeen out at the corner flank. Rugby's in a hurry to take it. Touched on by Black, the ruling figure of Mark McGee chases it. He's turned well, left foot shot is on. Good recovery tackle. And the half-time whistle goes. The Aberdeen supporters cheer their favourites off. The half-time scoreline, Aberdeen won by a minute one. So Bayern kick off the second half. Neil Simpson, the Aberdeen goal scorer, gets ready for another 45 minutes battling in midfield. In fact, it'll be the most important 45 minutes. Aberdeen have faced in European football for a very long time indeed. 45 minutes between Aberdeen and the place in the semi-finals of a European trophy for the very first time. And they have to find a net. If they don't, they'll go out on the away goals rule. So the task is perfectly plain. And the signs were towards the end of the first half that they had found a way to rattle the West German defence. The key to that perhaps was their midfield. Cooper Simpson and Strachan became more involved as the interval approached. The goal came from this kind of play involving these midfield players and from that point on Aberdeen looked to revitalise side. Dieter Hoeneß. That is Klaus Augenthaler who's got a strapping on his right thigh. And I can imagine that the Bayern manager would not want to lose that player, perhaps their best player in the first half, certainly their best defender, Del Haya. Sliding it towards the far post. They did it prodigiously leap that by Flugler, but didn't quite make it. Forsman going forward, across. And a bit of a misunderstanding, and McLeish appeared to leave it. Willie Miller thinks it should have been offside, I think. But the Aberdeen defence survives. A chance again to run up the West German defence, and McGee is blatantly fouled. Blatantly pulled back as he went free. And the French referee really ought to be doing something about this. It was Wolfgang Dremler who was the offender. You can see McGee breaking clear. He was having a free run at goal, and Jersey blatantly pulled from behind. Now, what can Aberdeen produce from this set-piece? We saw a masterpiece from Peter Weir on Saturday at Firhill. McGee was the man fouled. I wonder if Peter Weir might take the kick, number 11. Striking is over the ball, knocking it square for Simpson. Well taken by Miller. The free kick worked well. That little square ball to the side from Strachan. Getting Simpson an angle to shoot the ball beyond the wall, but Muller was down to it very quickly indeed. So a confab between the referee and the linesman results in the verdict going to Aberdeen after that little tangle. Free kick taken quickly, striking, laying it back. Simpson playing it in. Cooper challenging, and he'll be penalised for lifting his right boot too high, I think. Normal European fashion, yes, the free kick goes to Bayern. Haugen Teller. Heavily strapped indeed, but... The most influential member of the Bayern defence in the first half. And the scorer, of course, of a memorable goal. Would be just beating Rummenigge to that. Hoeneß trying to break past McLeish. And the Aberdeen centre-half showing a good turn of pace there to play it back to his goalkeeper. Well, we appear to be bumped from behind by Dremler and the header picked up by Kraus. This is Del Haya. Oh, beautiful shimmy from Rummenigge. This is danger for Aberdeen. Rummenigge looks to be through. 
The danger's still not clear as Breitner shoots and the deflection gives Bayern the corner. Well, how's this for a little bit of magic from Karl Heinz Rummenigge? The pass coming inside, a little shake of the hips and he leaves Willie Miller for dead. He tried to tee up the ball by playing it inside rather than shooting himself, but he might well have done. Oh, well, Rummenigge very disappointed. That was a great opportunity. There haven't been many for Bayern in the match. That's the kind of chance he might well have scored from. And Brighton are now trying to set up another. Great corner kick, and it's got a touch. Leighton was in trouble. And Weir remains very cool, playing it forward. Black challenging. A good player of defence, and Weir just couldn't keep it in, slipping at the wrong moment. Kraus to Dalaya. Oh, look at that for pace. Would be left for dead. Cooper's clearance. There's Black. Leaves it to Strachan. McGee immediately under pressure from Grober. Simpson has Kennedy breaking fast on the right. Simpson still up in support. Strachan has made space up front. Cooper tried to find him. And the interception gets the ball back to Muller. Doug Rugby. Miller looking for Mark McGee. Uh, Cooper. That's asking a lot of Weir. McGee. Now, what's the decision this time? Offside against Mark McGee. Well, McGee certainly has liked nothing in effort throughout the match so far. A lot of skill involved also. Good kick out to Miller and Augenthaler took most of the dead balls in the first half. Del Haier looking for the return pass from Dremler. Electric pace. That's good defending, a great tackle from Miller on Rummenigge. He's got a great source of inspiration, that's a poor ball forward. Now Breitner, Flugler making a run with Kennedy. Could have been a foul against the West German player, but the referee waves play on. There's McGee, Dremler surely holding him off. Grobe's tackle, McGee is certainly a hot handful for the German defence. Here he goes again. Didn't quite get past Grobe. And Dremler is taking no prisoners at all for Bayern at right back. Contested to the full by Peter Weir. That's Cooper. Weir and Cooper working the ball clear. Well, Cooper certainly wanted it badly. Great determination. Matched though by Hernes on that occasion. Pass from Brighton releasing Del Haya. This time the first time ball for Rummenigge. And Rugby kept his head to play it back to Leighton. Stuart Kennedy. The target is Mark McGee. And Grober standing and no ceremony at all thumps it onto the roof of the stand. Wolfgang Grober, 27-year-old centre-back. McLeish is up, supporting the midfield. Miller is the only man back for Aberdeen for the moment. Well, a high ball towards Strachan is not the most likely way to break down the German defence. But it's Aberdeen's throw. Malik Ferguson is now in the Aberdeen dugger. He spent the first half in the director's box. Grober. All well, the boos and whistles won't trouble him one little bit. McLeish is attacking that for Aberdeen. 
This is Horseman. Kraus takes over. Right now can't get to it. It's played by, by Kennedy. Kennedy has a lot of room to come forward. Bayern have been quite content to allow space for Kennedy and Rugby in deep positions to have a bit of time in the ball. But they've been closing down rapidly on men like Strachan and Weir. Played on by Rumenegger and cut off by Rugby. That's for McGee to chase. Grobo will reach it first. Hustled into an error. The referee took a lot of time about his decision but gave the corner to Aberdeen. Rugby and McLeish now making their way to the box. Weir again with the corner. Looking for Rugby, he seemed to be barged. And the referee gives the free kick to Bayern. Well, Rugby appeared to be adjusting his position and Flugler bumped into him, but the free kick goes to the German side. Billy Hernes, second from right on the West German bench. Well, we can tell that despite the strapping, takes the free kick. Rummenigge got the touch, took a bump on the head from McLeish, and Aberdeen have possession. Strachan. That pass just missed out McGee. That would certainly have been dangerous. McGee knows that. A little bit of applause for Strachan. The pass was just about a foot too far away from him. Yeah. Rumenegge is still the man who must be watched by Aberdeen. Handball by Rumenegger. Quite blatant and strangely unnecessary too for the by um, striker. Well, that's not really in character either. Rumenegger coming in with that heavy tackle. The free kick will have to be retaken. Referee is a casual languid air about him, Monsieur Vautreau from France. Pass was beyond McGee and it's gone for the goal kick. <laughs> Young Eric Blank in the biggest match of his life so far. Close his header. Black holding off Grober. Look how quickly the West German defenders close in. Breitner, a key man in midfield. Kennedy's header, a chase for McGee. That could be handball, I think, against Kennedy. Yes, the free kick is given. Well, Pathology is a very strange ground in that there are moments of complete silence, virtually, despite the full house being inside the stadium. Coming to life with some whistling now. But a very knowledgeable and interested crowd. So Paul Brightner is being told by the referee, I think, about the time-wasting problem, indicating that time will be added on. Horseman, Rumenegger deep to find space again. Wolfgang Dremler. This is Kraus. Gets it back from Delhaia. It's a good run forward by Kraus. He's away from Weir. Get Flugler on his left. Kennedy across very fast indeed. Chipping the pass forward. Now a chance for Strachan, that's great play of defence, Miller helping it to Strachan. Look at Simpson sprinting beyond Strachan on the outside. It could be used in a decoy, 
And a body check in Gordon Strachan brings that attack to an end for the moment. Hogan Teller was the offender. There was no way he was going to let Strachan go past in any circumstances. So the free kick to Aberdeen. 25 yards out. Oh, there's a six-man wall with Mark McGee as well. Brightman making seven. We are plating it for the goalie's top left-hand corner, but never had it on target. Strange that Augen Teller is allowed to take these dead balls with the strapped right thigh. Interesting conversation between Strachan and the referee, Monsieur Vautreau. I wonder what language they're using. There's Kraus. Delahaya has come off rugby to make space to run at the big defender. Peter Weir helping his defence. Now Dremler. And it's got a touch. McLeish. And that is a special goal coming in from Flugler, which went quite well in Aberdeen's challenge in Europe. What a goal it was. We're 15 minutes into the second half, and Bayern go back in front. Hans Flugler is the scorer. Now, just look at this. The ball is played in. It's touched on by Hannes. McLeish heads it out, and look at that for a volley. So Flugler, the scorer of the goal, which may well now be enough to see Bayern through to the semi-final of the Cup. A mammoth task ahead again for Aberdeen. 2-1 down. Less than half an hour left, and they have to find the net twice. Here's McGee. Dremler getting back. Grob is also there. People are doing well to get that back for Rugby. Black going for it. It's a bit of pushing by Black and Horseman. So it's a free kick to Bayern just inside their own box. So Hogan Teller will take the free kick again, despite the injury to his thigh. Bit of handball by Simpson. Now Kraus. Del Haye. Rubenegger. William Miller's with him. And Rugby back to pick up possession. And link up with Weir. Bremler to Del Haya. And this looking for the touch again. Flugler was up in support. Now Strachan. So much depends on Strachan's influence in the final half hour for Aberdeen. Once again, he's fouled by Flugler. Two number sevens flashing. Ironic too that Hans Flugler came into the side in place of Norbert Nachtwey because of his defensive qualities, and yet he still had the skill and the power to score that quite tremendous goal. McGee, a hand was used by McGee. Well, no doubt about that spot of descent by McGee. Frustration setting in. Hans Plugler, the scorer of Bayern's second goal, now back to his midfield defensive beat. McGee, Horseman is with him.
Ryan getting men back to close down the avenues available to Mark McGee. Kennedy's throw. Strachan. And down he goes again. Well, how much abuse can little man stand? It was Flugler again. He must be a very lucky man and indeed not to be shown a yellow card. A series of fouls, principally on Strachan. The Strachan recovers to take the free kick. Rugby and McLeish are in the box. Hernes back. And we are playing it against the defender for the throw. Rugby. Simpson back on for it. Flugler back. A hand appeared to be used. The crowd behind the goal claiming for a penalty kick. The referee showing a total lack of interest. Kennedy seeking out Black in the box. Argan Tala stood his ground brilliantly to head that clear. Strachan again. Crowded out. Very few places to go. Miller makes the option available inside. Black. Back it comes for Simpson, and that was promising from Aberdeen. It was a good build up. And the opportunity set up by a great run from Willie Miller to take the pass inside from Strachan, play it forward to Black, a bit unlucky the way he controlled it, but he still managed to tee it up for Simpson. The shot not quite good enough. So now there will be a substitution before this goal kick is taken. Stuart Kennedy is going off. John McMaster coming on. So Aberdeen clearly going for broke. The side will have to be reorganised. Neil Cooper, I think, may well go to full-back. Yes, Cooper's going to left-back. Rugby's going to right-back. McMaster going right into the middle of the field. McLeish's header. As Aberdeen try to settle now into their new formation with Rugby at right back and Cooper on the left. McMaster has become the central player in midfield alongside Neil Simpson. And that is undoubtedly because of his passing ability, especially early balls, picking out the strikers. Cooper. And was used by right now. Yes, the free kick is given. McGee feels as though he was bumped in any event, but the free kick for handball comes to the same effect. For McMaster taking charge. The wall is having to go back a yard or two. Five in the wall. Striking thumps it in. Black almost got a touch. And the referee has given a corner kick. Well, I can't confess that I saw the deflection. I thought that Black almost got to that ball from Strachan to deflect it in. But in any event, Aberdeen at the corner. Black is on that post. We are playing it across. The goalkeeper's committed. He didn't make it. And the referee's given a free kick to Bayern. Well, McLeish is very upset indeed. He's complaining that he jumped for the ball fairly, but the goalkeeper's in trouble. Manfred Muller is still on the deck. The customer of European fashion, the referee allowing attention for the goalkeeper. But really, he didn't seem to be the victim of anything too serious as he went for the ball with McLeish. In fact, the goalkeeper seemed to miss time his approach for the ball. McLeish appeared to be in command. Players collided and McLeish was punished. Well, the referee allowing a lot of time for treatment for Muller. Indicating that he's all right to resume. So the free kick to be taken by Augenthaler. Cooper attacking the ball in front of Delhaya.
So a long chase for Cooper. Must get the ball back in play quickly as time is fast running out for Aberdeen. Midway through the second half. Trailing by two goals to one, needing two to win. Grover will be happy to play that behind and the referee will have to make his mind up on this one. Indirect free kick is given to Aberdeen. Well, Grover is penalised, he doesn't like it one bit, but McGee was certainly trying to play the ball as the German defender protected it. 12 is McMaster, 11 is Weir. McMaster takes it. Helped on its way by Flugler. Strachan collects the throw from Rugby. The pass wasn't good enough. Forsman easily escorting it behind for the goal kick. Bido Horsman's been a powerful player in the Bayern defence. Anxious Aberdeen skipper Willie Miller showing excellent control. John McMaster. Not quite the nip and pace to reach that, but battling very hard. Here's Rummenigge. Kraus looking for Del High, and Cooper is alive to that pass. And up pace to get back. Neil Simpson, the scorer of Aberdeen's solitary goal in the first half. The Aberdeen supporters working up a chant to get behind the favourites again. Free kick has been given. And just less than 20 minutes left as. Strachan lines up the free kick. Cooper is there, Augen Teller won it. Weir can't find a way past Dremler to get the cross in. A very promising patch in the first half, Peter Weir, but he's been a bit subdued after the interval. That's McLeish coming to help. Good slide of foot from Weir, it's a great cross! And the save from Eric Black was quite brilliant. Manfred Müller, the West German hero. Now this really could so easily be an equaliser. Weir took the ball back from McLeish, checked inside to his right foot, it was a great cross. Black got to it, a powerful header, and look at that for handling from Müller. So Müller, the hero for Bayern. That certainly is good enough to earn the bonus. Eric Black, I'm sure, couldn't believe that that didn't go in. <laughs> Cooper is certainly rash with that challenge on Kraus. Wolfgang Kraus has taken a wrap across the shins, which I wouldn't have thought merited. Right amount of agony. Free kick is taken, and the referee's having a word with Peter Weir, and that's certainly a case of mistaken identity if he thinks Weir was the offender. Clearly, Neil Cooper. McMaster chases on for Black. Can he get to the ball first? Once again, Muller was alive to the situation, sprinting off his line. Master to Rugby and back to Leighton. Oh, Dremler claiming surely in the back of Peter Weir. Yes, the referee agrees. Cooper gives it short to McMaster. McGee turning. Great play from McGee. And Grobe, the very diligent marking defender. Goal by number four has done a fine job at the back, too, for Bayern. Cooper playing it in, there's no one involved, and uh, Navarin player is on the deck. Eric Black appeared to be taken out of the play as the cross came in, holding his face. But the referee's waving play on. Black will get no 
relief at all from the referee. With Black clearly taking a face knock. He's working very hard indeed alongside McGee, trying everything they know, these two, to break down this Bayern defence. And with a little over 15 minutes left, they have to break that defence down twice. Rugby once again being given a lot of space by the Bayern players. Strachan isn't. Two men closing in rapidly. Good ball from Rugby. This is Simpson. Miller arriving. McGee couldn't control it. Again, a promising build up as Miller was springing from the back to link up in midfield. McMaster, Black just needed a touch. This horseman had denied him the chance. Flugler. It's a quarter of an hour left. Can Aberdeen find the net twice in the last 15 minutes? Well, they're making another change. John Hewitt is coming on to go up front. Neil Simpson goes off. Hewitt has missed much of the season through injury. Back to his full vigour once more. He scored four for the reserves recently. Can he turn the tide for Aberdeen? Black trying to get on the end of the flick on from McGee. Appeals for handball. What has the referee given? Yes, he's given the free kick. He's so casual and languid about it, the referee, you can never be sure. Strachan may well take it. Aberdeen throwing lots of players forward. Must throw caution away now as Master has a little chat with Strachan. Well, they couldn't agree, obviously. Strachan plays it in. The header finds the net. And Aberdeen are back in the match once more. Alec McLeish. Alec McLeish gives Aberdeen a chance. What a great goal it was. Now, just watch this free kick. And if you think for one minute that Strachan and McMaster were in any kind of confusion, you're wrong. They were doing this quite deliberately. It was a carefully rehearsed piece of Tom Pullery to deceive the German defence, and it worked. Strachan went back, took the free kick, but Cleese stretched those neck muscles, and Muller couldn't keep it out. So Alec McLeish picks up only his second goal of the season, but it gives Aberdeen the urge to force the pace in the last 13 minutes. Can they make it? There's Eric Black. The goalkeeper knocks it out. It's in the net, and Aberdeen are in front. John Hewitt. Petodre goes berserk. John Hewitt's been on the field two minutes, and he's scored the goal which might make European history for Aberdeen. Now the cross, the far-flung ball, was always testing out this Bayern defence. Black left for it, a fine header. Muller again saving brilliantly. The first one in the spot was John Hewitt. And he's got his reward. Well, that scoreline is almost impossible to believe. Three minutes ago, Bayern appeared to be costing through to the semi-finals. But Aberdeen would have none of it. Two great goals. Eric Black setting up that goal as he set up the first for Neil Simpson. Well, the chanting and the singing all around the stadium. It's a night which the Aberdeen fans already will never forget, but they can't afford to relax. Bayern now pushing men into the box. Cooper's header clear. Here's Del Haya. Cooper won't let him go for the byline. Good play by the young defender. Hewitt using those young, fresh legs to sprint after the ball. Well, the Aberdeen bench, I'm sure, can't believe it either. Alec Ferguson and Archie Knox biting their nails as well they might. 3-2 up, 11 minutes left. And the free kick is given to Aberdeen. 
bit of relief there as McLeish clashes with Rummenigge. So Aberdeen had the free kick, and Aberdeen now have the opportunity to show a distinct lack of urgency. The Aberdeen supporters now singing, here we go, here we go. Argentalis had it clear, McMaster playing it forward, and the substitutions clearly did no harm at all for Aberdeen. McMaster has exerted influence in midfield, and John Dewitt has demonstrated the sharpness, which has got him seven goals before tonight, despite missing a host of matches. Well, Stewart, first of the ball before Grober. And John Hewitt is certainly a man to welcome onto the field the last 15 minutes. He's so sharp and alert and quick up front. He'll certainly make the Bayern defenders think. Now Breitner trying to inject some urgency into the Bayern play. Wolfgang Dremler. Bill High controlling it. Cooper snapping into the tackle quickly. Oh, shoot, gives it away to Del Haye. Into the box early. Willie Miller standing there to intercept the ball from Kraus. Well, McMaster is renowned for his long early passes from deep positions, but that wasn't one to test the Bayern defence. Miller, once again a key man. He must marshal Aberdeen through these closing ten minutes. Here's Rummenigge, playing it wide to Del Haya. This is dangerous for Aberdeen. Del Haya in a good position to play a telling cross. Pernis is up for it. There's Rummenigge. Well, it certainly would have been a memorable goal, and he caught that correctly with a bicycle kick. Over, overhead kick, which Leighton took comfortably. Strachan calmly wide to Weir. It's all about possession now for Aberdeen, but how a fourth goal will clinch it. And that was a blatant body check. Wolfgang Dremler made no attempt to play the ball. Indirect free kick indicated by referee of Votro. So Aberdeen's free kick. And with these young, eager strikers up front, Black and Hewitt supporting this man, Mark McGee. Anything could still happen when the ball gets into that Bayern box. The goal kick to Bayern. Paul Brighton. There's Dremler. We are working hard in a defensive role this time. Difficult one for Miller, he's having to backpedal, judged it well. Rummenigge, hustled and hurried by Strachan. Here's Dremler. The match has suddenly taken on a new complexion. It's Bayern now who have to take the initiative. They have to carry the fight to Aberdeen for the first time in the match. Here's Augenthaler, the scorer of the opening goal. A great goal at that. Here's Breitner. Is he getting a chance to shoot? The pass to Kraus wasn't good enough. The timing was wrong and Kraus was offside. Well, Breitner appeared to be giving, being given the opportunity to have a shot at goal as Miller backed off him, but the pass to Kraus took the pressure off Aberdeen. Good play by McGee. Here's Hewitt. Strachan getting some room now to play and... Trying to test the goalkeeper. <laughs> well, the European flag, the UEFA flag flying over Petodre. And we now face the real prospect of it flying for the first time over a semi-final. Morgan Teller now struggling with that thigh injury. Calmly pulled down by Rugby. Black to McMaster. Chase for Hewitt with Grober. Hewitt's very quick indeed. And Grober had to turn rapidly to play it behind. 
Well, no, the referee, in fact, is giving a decision to buy in. I think a bit of holding by Stewart. The referee trying to sort things out. It really was a foul by Stewart on Grobe. You can see now Augenthaler is having to limp with that thigh muscle injury. And why he still takes these dead balls, I really don't know. Played forward by Horseman, there's Cooper. Masters headed on. Good leap by McLeish. Now can Strachan get this under control? Bright but challenging. Master wide to black. Take it for a run up the flank if he can. Good tackle. Rugby takes over, but Strachan's been penalised, I think, yes, the free kick has been given to Bayern. Having invention, not at all happy about that. Five minutes left, five minutes between Aberdeen and the semi-finals. Here's Dremler. Del Haya. Dremler again, Hewitt will have to close him down. Into the heart of the box. The police plays it out. Here's Peter Weir, can he get to this ball first? So here's Breitner. Played across by Rumenega. Kraus arriving in the box late. And out it goes. Played forward by Dremler again. That was misjudged in the air by McLeish. So Bayern get the corner. Now Hernes is complaining about Aberdeen time wasting. Rumenegger's corner kick. Leighton's in trouble and Del Haya couldn't get on the end of it. Well, a lot of hearts and mouths as that cross came over. Willie Miller holding off Breitner, showing lots of strength as he went for the ball. Well, he's really enjoying himself now, the Aberdeen skipper. There's Mark McGee. McMaster to Rugby. Now Cooper. And this will do for the Aberdeen players, they must keep possession. Three minutes left. Eric Black's been a key man tonight up front for Aberdeen, involved in two of these three goals. Black heads it on. Hewitt is in and Muller swoops in the ball. Well, Aberdeen giving absolutely everything, both in defence and attack. Rugby turns it back. Another man has been a tower of strength for Aberdeen. Black jumping for it, the horseman. Played forward by Dremler. Into the box for Brubenegger. Miller attacks the ball and clears it. Now Del Haya. Hewitt claiming it. And that's just the kind of save that the Aberdeen players and supporters welcomed. Cleanly taken. Now Strachan. To Hewitt. There is space now for Aberdeen to work in. McGee keeping it in play. Black's waiting in the middle. Well, the cross wasn't up to scratch. There's Algen Teller with that heavy strapping. Holding off McGee, but hasn't yet got the fitness to continue the job. McGee plays it in, and it's gone straight across for the goal kick. And look at Manfred Muller, he won't wait for the ball boy. Well, he sees this opportunity of a semi-final bonus fast disappearing.
the last time a clash with some confusion. There's rugby. Peter Weir. Rugby has possession. There's one minute left for play. 3 2 to Aberdeen, the final minute of the match. Strachan plays it inside. McMaster reaches it. Played wide by McGee for Hewitt. The support is there from Cooper. It's good possession play from Aberdeen. Strachan more intent on keeping the ball than anything else. Needs someone to come close though, he needs some support. He didn't have anyone inside and he's given possession away. Calais Delhaye. Danger man all night for Bayern. Halted by Strachan, appears to have been everywhere in the last quarter of an hour or so. Well, that's good play from Hewitt, dragging the ball away from Delhaye, attacking the heart of the German defence. Well, Wolfgang Bremler has been lucky so far, in my view, not to be booked, and still he survives once again. Hewitt is the man in the deck. The 45 minutes of the second half are now over. We're into injury time. Dremler back in his defensive position. A lucky man for my money not to be booked. And the Aberdeen supporters now beginning to build up a chant. So the free kick will be taken when the referee is satisfied that Hewitt's back at his feet. It's already taken, the final whistle goes. Aberdeen have won perhaps their greatest victory ever. Alec Ferguson dancing a tick of delight in the track, and well he might. His team came back from the dead. Supporters now unfortunately on the pitch. But Aberdeen tied up at one apiece at half-time, went behind to a great goal from Flugler, and then two goals in 60 seconds. The first from the head of Alec McLeish, and then the winner from John Hewitt, turned the match back to Aberdeen, and after a performance which will never be forgotten by the 24,000 people inside the stadium, Aberdeen go through to the semi-final. tumultuous welcome from their supporters back on the field by public demand and applause and cheering all around the stadium the photographers crowding in John Hewitt, the world scorer of the winner being photographed the rugby with the gap in the front teeth wearing the Aberdeen cap and scarf The jubilation all around the stadium. The fans are saluted by the Aberdeen players. The Aberdeen captain, Willie Miller, perhaps the most influential figure in the field for Aberdeen tonight. McLeish to score a second goal. And the players looking delighted but calm for the most part. But this is a night which they will surely never forget. Scarves waving all around the stadium. Well, the supporters just don't want to leave. Well, Alec, congratulations. I mean, it's an atmosphere I've never known in Scotland, and I thought it was tremendous. Yes, well, it, it made it into, I mean, the finish, of course. I mean, it's, and as I always say that to the players, send them home happy. Whatever you do in the last quarter an hour, always send them home happy and do something then, and I think we did. Well, it was only about a quarter of an hour to go when you made the substitutions. Did you think at that stage that you're possibly going out the tournament. Yes, I did, uh, to be honest, I thought we were out. But uh, I had to do something because you're not going to sit back and accept defeat. I don't think we should ever do that. And it's the one uh, quality in which made me decisive in, in, in this tournament.